Are you ready for an open discussion with the best of the best and the best of what's next? Welcome to the Tony D'Urso Show. Join in on a great conversation today with some of the world's great influencers as they showcase great advice and techniques that made them the game changers they are today. Now, here's Tony D'Urso. Welcome, I'm your host, Tony Tierso, and once again, I'm pleased to have you join us. At the time of this recording, we went over 17 million total listens throughout my entire podcasting career, and now with you listening, we have one more. I owe a lot to you for faithfully listening every week and sharing with your friends, and I want to thank you again. We make a very good team. And as you know, this is all designed to help you and your friends turn your vision into reality. Today, we're chatting with someone at the top of their category, an elite entrepreneur, and we're going to discuss how to hack your brand with Jeremy Ryan Slate. Now, no matter what you do for business, you know that the better your brand is perceived, the more that people recognize your brand and the more your brand is well thought of. Well, that's job security, isn't it? Even if you work for yourself, right? And in all my years, too many actually, of marketing and promotion, It was always about pushing the brand and making that brand more and more accepted and recognized and loved by the target audience. And I've used this to the fullest to get my own show more and more well-known. Well, check this out. Jeremy Slate is the founder of the Create Your Own Life podcast, which studies the highest performers in the world. And he studied literature at Oxford University. So I'm certain he's really good with words. And he specializes in using podcasting and new media to create celebrity to, cl- to create celebrities. And he was ranked number one in iTunes new and number 78 in the iTunes top 100. And those are amazing feats. Tell you, I tell you, I know this. That's amazing. And he was also named number one podcast to listen to by Inc. Magazine in 2019. And as well as being named a top influencer by Forbes. You get where I'm going. He knows his stuff. He walks the walk. He talks the talk, right? Did I say that backwards? He talks the talk and walks the walks. He knows his stuff. And by the way, if you're hearing this on Apple Podcasts, would you please rate my show? And if you don't have Apple, that's fine. The Tony D'Urso show is, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere, such as Roku, YouTube, Rumble, Spotify. And you can also go to Tony, D-U-R-S-O.com slash review and drop a kind one. Now let's get into it. Hi, Jeremy. Welcome to the Tony D'Urso Show. Hey, Tony. Thanks for having me. Um, and shout out to you because we've been using uh, your traffic services for, I think, a good a little bit over two years now. Uh, so it's nice to finally kind of be on this side of the mic. And we just appreciate you uh, over here at uh, Command Your Brand and at Create Your Own Life. Well, I'm happy to help. I know a few things about marketing, and I'm glad that it's still working today, even though social media changes quite a bit. There are algorithms, yeah. logarithms, and everything else, and protocols, but the basics are the basics. And I want to learn about hacking our brand because you've taken things. It's not just one world when you podcast, folks, and you know mm-hmm. this. It, it, there's so many facets. There's so many parts to it, and you can be really, really good at one part but there's still more to learn. And branding, it to me is a huge world, though it's some of us just kind of maybe cast this off as a quick, as a quick thing. There's so much to learn. And the better you are at branding, whatever you do, whether you work for yourself or not, you know this, the better you are with your business, with your life, because it is job security, as I just mentioned. What I'd like to know, Jeremy, actually, before we get into branding, let's go into how did it all start for you? You've done different things, as I mentioned in your bio. What's your backstory? So um, I, believe it or not, have my master's degree in early Roman Empire propaganda. I actually uh, wrote my graduate thesis on how the Roman emperor convinced people he was God. And I I traced this whole thing back to Alexander the Great. And uh, it was an interesting experience, but there aren't exactly people lining up to hire you with that sort of a background. Like, oh, my gosh, can I hire another ancient history major? Uh, No, there aren't people lining up to, uh, to hire us. So in... 2011, I came out of, after getting my master's degree, into a really rough job market, which it doesn't seem like it's improved that much. And I, I came out and I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach school. Well, um, I ended up not being able to find any jobs out of school. So I 
worked basically two 16, 17 hours a day and then just kind of sleeping in between. I was working at a gym uh, during the day or at night from five until 11 every night. And then I was painting houses in like an old school way. I worked with this guy that like insisted we do everything by hand, which has taught me a lot. I still do a lot of that stuff, but I worked with him from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. every day. So I didn't have a lot of time to do a lot of things. And I, I was working my butt off, man. I ran into um, a friend of my family at the grocery store. And he says, hey, you know, the Catholic school that I, I uh, work at is looking for teachers and you don't need like a degree or anything like that in order to do it. So I ended up teaching Catholic school for two years and I got eaten up by the kids, man. I'm going to be really honest with you. I, I look young, so I don't stand far out between them. And at 22, I did not, I, I looked like I should have been in school still. So I, my days every day were them trying to get me angry and then get me on YouTube. That was every single minute of every single day. It was, it was a rough experience, man. And then in 2012, my mom ended up having a really bad stroke. And it made me look at a lot of different things I was doing. And I was trying to figure out, like, what do I want to do with my life? And my wife, uh, who was my fiance at that time, was prevented, presented with a network marketing opportunity. I didn't know what that was. So I'm like, dude, I'm going to be a millionaire like next week. It's going to be awesome. And uh, it didn't work like that. But it was the I, I actually called the principal and quit my job because I thought I had this like full time career. So that was kind of my first jump into, into entrepreneurship. And I went from there to selling life insurance, which I was good at. But those conversations with people weren't fun. Um, I sold products on Amazon and then I eventually taught myself how to code and started building websites and working at a friend's marketing firm. And I started the Create Your Own Life podcast literally just as a hobby. And in November of 2015, we had 10,000 listens in our first 30 days. And, you know, the rest is history, man. It led to our business and everything else we're doing. That is quite an amazing journey and a ride. I can totally track with that. And now, so you just started the Command Your Brand. It was just a side thing. And what did you see? Was there this vision you you saw for that and branding and you could podcast? Let's talk about when that vision happened that then blossomed into what you do. So in 2016, like midway through the year, we we had a friend say to me, like, hey, can you do this for me? Meaning, like, can you start a podcast for me? So if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do it right, that means I'm gonna book your guests, I'm gonna edit your show, I'm gonna make sure it goes out on social media right. And we're also going to do an awareness campaign and get you another podcast. Um, I'll tell you what, Tony, we hadn't done it before other than my own show. So I didn't really have any social proof to show. So I charged way too little for way too much work. And I wasn't making very much money doing it. And eventually we were working with really busy CEOs. They're like, you know, having a show is great and doing all this stuff is great. But can I just go on other podcasts? So we actually ended up cutting out everything else we're doing. And we really just focused on finding the right audience, teaching people how to speak the right way, and then getting people booked on the right shows. So since 2017, that's exactly what we've been doing at Command Your Brand. Um, the business we started isn't the business we're currently running, but it's when you listen to people that you're servicing, you find out a lot about what they actually want and you get rid of the things that don't matter. And we've really doubled down on being the PR firm for the podcast space. And now this year, we're, we're up to a team of, of 18 and you know we're closing in on our first seven figure revenue this uh, year, hopefully this year. That is astounding. And you do so much with all this. Now, aside from making money, which you know is probably the first thing people would just quip and say, oh yeah, I'm doing this to make money. I sense a lot more because when I interview successful people, there's this great purpose. There's this great reason behind why they do. And I think that that, that sort of a, a purpose when it, when it, uh, not gels, but coincides with the per person when it syncs with their beingness, it really takes off. So I'd like to know, what's your purpose? Why do you do this? See, I look at it and I realize as people, we're finite, right? There's only so much we can do. And if I lift up other people with really big, impactful purposes and, you know, things that I want to support, I'm really able to make a huge impact that way. So that's really what it's about, man. It's about lifting up other people that have really good big purposes that i can kind of help push out there and put them in the right direction and as a brand we can make a massive impact that way so that that's really what it's about man is creating that future that i, I want my children to have and that i want other people to have by the people that we're helping to lift up and raise up we're talking to jeremy ryan slate we're talking about hacking your brand and you can find him at commandyourbrand.com. That's three words, commandyour, Y-O-U-R, 
brand.com. Jeremy, let's get into the vision path. I want to learn about branding. I want more because, you know, I mentioned this before. You, every single person listening, you cannot listen to everybody's podcast, take everybody's seminar, watch everybody's webinar, read everybody's book, take everybody's class. It's you, There's just not enough time in this life to do it. So that's why you and I, we curate and we bring what we believe are really good guests to help our our audience grow. And it's a huge, huge industry. And we want to learn more about branding. And is it really a billion dollar market these days in podcasting? It is. And that's in terms of advertising as the advertising market is growing very quickly. We haven't quite eclipsed a billion yet, but we're, we're darn close. Um, I think the the uh, forecast on that was, I think by 2022, we were going to be at like 1.5 billion. Uh, we haven't passed the billion dollar mark yet, but we're, we're darn close. Now, the reason I, I based that on advertising is just to show like, hey, the money's out there and the growth is out there. Uh, I'm sure if you put the combined income of all the individual shows, there's not really an industry number on that. It's probably significantly larger than that. But there is a huge opportunity for businesses to get out there, get on the right podcasts and, and really get in front of their audience. Well, let's talk about branding and how we can utilize that. What there's people that will that there are new people, I believe, all the time coming on, learning and, and podcasting. And of course, there's a there's there is a great number or a greater number. I don't know, I don't know this year's statistics. There's a great number that are disillusioned. They'll do seven, eight, nine, ten shows. And there's even a word in the dictionary, Jeremy, as you probably know, pod fade. They you know, I, I've run into people, they podcast, next thing you know, they did 10, 10 episodes or a dozen and they're they're out because they haven't been able to monetize it. They couldn't get up over that hurdle. But I, I also think to that too, Tony, there's probably, there's a word for that too, and that's called dilettante. And I'm sure if you looked at a lot of different things in their lives, there's a lot of dilettantism going on, meaning they try a little bit of this, try a little bit of that, try a little bit of this, um, but continue. You definitely have to commit. It reminds me of an old marketing adage, which I kind of used now and then, which is you throw everything up on the wall and you see what sticks. It's a very interesting thing, but, but it, but when you really think about that, the more you think about it, that's a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of expense mm -hmm. and years can go by throwing everything up on the wall to see what exactly. sticks. So <laughs> you need a plan. You need, you need, you need to know your vision. You need to know where you're going. And there, there's a lot that could be said about this. I, I believe that if a person is really committed to whatever they're podcasting about or they're doing for their job or their business or, or their company, and if they put that together and podcast about that, it just adds more. It's, it's, it just adds more steam to it. But still, what is it about, what is it that you believe is is different these these days in allowing us to to open up doors on how to better brand ourselves that we never had before. Um, well, I'll say I'll say to the first part you said there first, and 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 that's the idea of you say there's people that get past ten, maybe twenty episodes, and that's the idea of pod fading. And I always tell people you want to stick with this for minimum of a year, and and, and I think honestly. Too many people jump into a podcast for the same reason they jumped into YouTube in 2007, and that's that they think they're going to build this thing up, get a large number of followers, and sell ads. For most people, that's not the correct strategy. Your podcast should support what you're already doing. It should support whatever you're creating, whatever you're doing, because it's an incredible PR vehicle to get in front of people, to network with people, to create trust. But I, I look at it as more of that front piece that creates trust. So I think once you can kind of wrap your head around that and, and kind of have that different viewpoint on it, it's a much bigger impact when you're realizing, okay, this is a portion of my business and it's helping me to network with people. It's helping me to get notoriety. I've gotten a lot of media attention because of what I've done with the podcast. So if you can figure that out and how it's going to fit with what you're doing, that's vital. The other thing as well, and you've probably seen this, Tony, a lot of people think they're going to be Joe Rogan. And they're just going to sit there and talk to somebody for three hours and they're going to sell, get their CPM up and they're going to sell so many ads. Man, it's going to be wild. But you have to realize it's really about niching down and getting in front of that right audience. And that's where the real value is, because then you could become the opinion leader for that small group and you can grow out of that. You look at a lot of these, a, a lot of different podcasters, they've started small servicing a group. And as they've gotten notoriety, maybe that, that funnel starts to get a little bit larger of who they're servicing. 
but you have to start small first. So I think that's kind of the vital things you have to understand is, you know, be in this for a year, support what you're already doing, but at the same time, who is that niche market you can really get in front of? Now, in terms of how it supports your brand, I, I think the reason that someone should have a podcast or a blog or whatever it may be is because if you are an opinion leader, you're going to have something to say, right? You're going to have opinions on things. So you want to have people have a place to go to get your content, whether it's a blog, whether it's a podcast, whatever it may be. To me, podcasting is the easiest way to do it because I was an academic writer and very few people could understand what I said. I've learned how to write better copy now, man. It took a long time to do that. But it was a way I could have conversations with people and I could start to make an impact and I could start to make a name for myself. So figure out what your content strategy is first and where that fits with everything you're doing. But that's one of your primary aspects to branding and getting out there. And based on the timing on something, I just did an interview with Seth Green, which may have just appeared in broadcast last week or maybe the week before, depending on sure. the timing. And in that, we talked a little bit about this. And, and for the audience listening, this adds to it. We were talking about how when you bring on guests to use their influence, to use their Correct. ability to promote, to grow your show. It's not just you yourself. They can email, they can put it in their social media and so on and so forth. There's a lot that we talked about in that show is really amazing. It was a whole hour on just a couple points, which was great for broad, for podcasting. And I know you do a number of those as well. But I just want to point out that this is now the branding and public relations part. And actually, that's going to let's segue into the public relations. And well, well using, can I add something to what you just said there, Tony? Because please, that's yeah. it's an important point you made is like using your guests for traffic. Absolutely. But there's another aspect to that. Um, there's a really great book. It was written, I think, in the 70s by Al Reese and Jack Trout. It's called Positioning the Battle for Your Mind. And positioning is the way to get that position in somebody's brain of something they're already familiar with, you know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, whatever it is. And you either position yourself with that or against it. So what you're doing, that's why everybody says we're the Uber of, right? Because people understand what Uber is. So if you position yourself with it, they get it. So what you're actually doing when you interview these guests, even more than just using them for traffic, you're using them for branding positioning because now you're seen with these certain people. So you're able to get that spot in other people's minds if you're consistently seen with you know people within a niche. So that's another really, really vital thing to think about is when you're doing interviews or being interviewed, that's branding positioning for you besides just traffic. And that's another really big point to brand building. But go ahead. It's, a, it's an important point to, to add to that. I'm so glad you brought that up because I love Al Reese and Jack Trout. I love that book and the book. Al, Al and I talk, talk uh, via email every once in a while. He's a cool dude. Oh, I w I'd love to interview him. His book with his daughter, The 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, have been the top book on my bookshelf for many years. I mean, I've really poured through that quite a bit. And to anyone, if you don't know Al Reese, Jack Trout, you got to binge on their stuff. Not actually, not binge. Maybe that's not the right word anymore. Use, utilize, absorb, get it in your brain because that's the real good stuff here. Yeah, it, it's that. And there's another. There's another guy that's uh, really great, and his name has slipped my mind at the moment. Um, he wrote a book called "The Marketer as Philosopher," um, and that fits really well with kind of this this branding, positioning, and, and storytelling aspect. Well, all right. Um, Flint McLaughlin, that's his name, Flint McLaughlin. Flint, very good. All right. Do you have any hacks that you'd like to give us? Because I want to go into a couple of uh, I want to go into a couple of other points. Any branding or public relation hacks you'd like to share? Yeah. So the first thing, like I said, is definitely having your content piece, whether it's a podcast, whether it's a blog, whatever it is, because that's the place that when you're reaching out to media or you're getting active, that's where people are going to go back to your home base and they're going to want to see that you have something to say. So that's why it's important to have those things on your site. But the other thing too, is how you're putting together your website and your branding um, before you're ever really reaching out to media or things like that. Your website copy should be written in third person. And that's I, I don't know about you, Tony, it annoys me where people have their everything written first person on their website. Um, third person, because people that are important, other people talk about them. And that's why it's kind of important to do that. So you want to talk in third person on your website. The other thing is, too, is you want to have, I do this in a Google Doc and the link's right on my website, but you want to have approved bios that people can use if they're going to feature you in media. And there's two specific bios people are going to look for. There's a 75-word bio and a 200-word bio. 
So on my website, if you go to my About Me, there's a Google Doc where the, anybody in media can get those, those uh, bios and use them in anything they're going to write up. The other thing, too, is having professional photos of yourself on your site, too, because if you're media ready, those are going to be there. Um, the other thing you're going to need is a, a page on your website called a media page where you're storing media features. So once you have those things together, you have your content piece, you have your, uh, your bios, your photos, and your media page, and your copyright in third person, the thing you're going to want to start to do if you don't already have a ton of media is gather some media pieces. And this is one of my favorite things that people don't really think of, Tony. Everybody's in a small pond somewhere, but everybody skips this step you want to figure out what are the places that you are a big fish in a small pond. I'll give you an example. I, I grew up in a small town, five eighths of a mile in size called Hamburg, New Jersey. Nothing happens there. Um, you know, if the wind blows too strong, it's a news story. Now, the reason this is important is you may live in New York City. There are certain parts of New York City that have their own newspaper. So you're going to want to use newspapers, online publications and things like that, make a spreadsheet and what you can then do is you can write press releases to some of these different places and get them to pick it up. Now, the purpose of a press release is actually to get other media, right? But it can be a media piece itself if you're sending it to the right sites and getting it featured. So a lot of my early news pieces were in small local newspapers that printed my releases in their paper and also on their website. So you're getting a backlink and they were do follow links, which is really good because it helps your SEO. I had a producer one time read and a press release in the newspaper, and that's how I got my first TV appearance. So you want to be thinking with how can I generate some of these media appearances in my small pond because then I can use it to get other pieces. But this is how you're really setting up kind of your initial branding plan and your initial um, kind of PR plan. It's something everybody can do, but everybody kind of skips because like, how do I get in Forbes? How do I get in Inc? How do I get all these different things? Well, if you don't have this base and have these things, you're never going to get the Forbes, the Inc, the entrepreneur, whatever it may be. Those are really good points. And those aren't just good points. Those are superior points that, again, anyone just dabbling in this field, it'll just gloss over. You really do this on something you really believe in yourself, that you really invest yourself into, and you do these points. I know them for a fact. They work, and they will really bring your brand up quite a bit. They'll bring up your 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 life, you what you what you do for a job, whether you're an entrepreneur and you think it's a job or you think it's your own business or however you look at it, this will just take it right up. And this is not just a little bit of banter between podcasters. This is this is this is the stuff that mm -hmm. works no matter what happens out there. You get these points in place and you know you're talk you're podcasting about your company is a construction company in a local town or Los Angeles, and you're podcasting about that, but you get these points in, and next thing you know, your brand recognition of your company and of you grows and grows and grows. And with that, we I want to get... add two things to that Please. too that's going to make it more successful, whether it's that small construction company or whatever it may be. Um, depending on what year you're listening to this, because it's a great thing about podcasts, right? They're evergreen. You want to Google your how to write a press release in whatever your year is. Um, there's a great, so how to write a press release in 2021. There's a great article by HubSpot that teaches you how to write an effective press release and they update it every year. So how to write a press release in whatever year you're listening to this in. And the other thing as well is you need to learn when you're writing releases, what's newsworthy, like what's important, what are, what's interesting. Like you can't just write a thing about, you know, ABC company exists. Well, that's great. But what's interesting about them? You know, are you veteran owned? Are you working with, uh, a certain type of clientele? Are you doing a charity drive? Did you hit some sort of special statistic in your niche? When I hit 50,000 downloads, I wrote a press release about it. You and I both know in the podcasting world, that's not huge, but to people outside of it, it sounds huge. So it got me some notoriety. So you want to figure out what is interesting and newsworthy about what you're interesting or what you're doing. So you always want to ask yourself the question, why should someone care? And that's going to tell you what's newsworthy about what you're doing. Great points. Great points. And we can really build a million dollar network on podcasting. That's that really possible because there's a lot of podcasters out there. They just want to earn a living. Uh, and I, I think they're shooting a little low because when you're in something brand new that you don't really know everything about, I think the expectations are not as high as they should be, not as organized. And I think that's why so many people fade. But if you realize that there's a bigger potential, take it more seriously, like a professional, 
then I think you can grow a lot. And I'd love to hear more about how we can really build our network. Well, and that's something to think about. I think a lot of, I, I like the, the points you mentioned there is I think a lot of people don't come off as professional early on. They're not prepared and they're short sighted on what they're thinking about. Because yes, it's good to make advertising money. It's good to get your your CPM up or your, you know, whatever you're getting per thousand downloads for your podcast. But for a lot of people, that's actually not the most valuable aspect. The most valuable aspect are the podcasts you're going on because those people have influence and the people you're interviewing because those people have influence. And, and that's where the actual value is in the building a million dollar network is. Network with your guests, see how you can connect with them, see how you can work together, see how you can do things for them. You know, I've built some incredible relationships from people I've had on the podcast, and that's where the actual value is that most people are missing. Everybody's looking at the download numbers, the number of dollars coming in. They're not looking at the people they're connecting with and how they can build a relationship with them. Because a lot of these people you're talking to, you didn't have a platform, probably wouldn't give you the time of day. But since you have a platform, they're spending time with you. So that's a really big in, and it's something that's really vital, but people are totally missing the boat on the value of the high level networking you're doing. Yes. And another facet on this, a bonus, if you, if you will, is especially if you're interviewing others and if you're, and if you're interviewing others about a field that you're in, you wind up getting mentored and you learn a lot. I get mentored an hour or two hours per week by elite entrepreneurs, people who are at the top of their category. And, and as I mentioned earlier, you can't watch and listen and hear everybody, you know, read everybody's book and all that. But when you get mentored in various facets, whatever you're doing, whether it's construction or you're doing tech or you 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 work in a store and you and you hack your day job by having a podcast about gardening and and, and orchids and stuff, by bringing in experts in that field and talking about them, your audience learns more, but you also wind up learning. And I, and I get this from other podcasters off the air. They learn so much from their guests that help them propel so much more. So, so while it helps you in your business and it helps you sustain and it helps you grow, it's also helping you on another level dynamically increase your ability to perform at your job. Exactly. Because, you know, like not everybody's going to have, you know, Tony D'Erso doesn't have time to hang out with everybody. But if you have Tony on your podcast and you get a chance to learn from him, like, like, look at the value in that. And those are the things you need to be thinking of um, approaching everything as a student. And what can I learn from them? Because I'll, I'll be honest with you, Tony, I had two podcasts. I had a podcast I launched back in 2014 called Rock Your Life. And it was horrible. And it was life coachy. And I knew everything about everything. And it wasn't very good. When I launched my second podcast, which is my current one, Create Your Own Life and kind of trashed the old one. The big difference was I made a, a, a list of who are the top 100 people I most admire and want to learn from. And when I reached out to those and approached it as a student, dude, there's so much value in that. And I, and I think that is something people are missing. Great points. Great points. Thank you. Jeremy, we're always on the lookout for what helps us bring more success as we talk about or helps take our business to another level. And one thing I've learned a lot is from the personal habits of those whom I've interviewed. We'd love to know, are there any personal habits you feel, you believe that really contribute to the success of you accomplishing your vision? So I get up every morning and I have a, have a light breakfast. I, take, have, I work out first thing every day, come back and I take a 10 minute cold shower. And uh, it's very difficult the first time I do that. I'm gonna be very honest with you, Tony, but it uh, helps your immune system. It wakes you up more than you've ever been woken up before. And it also helps with things like um, joint inflammation, arthritis, and things like that. So that's actually been a huge thing to set me up in the right way. And I don't take an appointment or an email before 10 a.m. And the reason being is it allows me to handle a lot of the you know, battle plan things that I need to get done early in the day. Because if I don't get those things done before 10 a.m., they ain't getting done, man. So that's really a big, important thing for me. And something I've tried to get better with because I'm just, I'm not great at it. You know, we all have our things we struggle with is staying off Twitter um, a little bit more during the day because I tend to be on Twitter just a little bit too much. Um, but that really focusing on my health and how I'm doing and how I'm showing up has been good. I'll tell you, I'll tell you another thing that took me a long time to learn, Tony, and that's how to really write up a good job description or really write up a good, um, like how somebody's job works. Um, in our business, we call them hat write-ups, you know, the hat you have to wear to accomplish a job. 
And it's how should that person be? What should they do? And every single step to their day-to-day job and all the programs they need to run that job. So that's allowed me to really delegate better. And I think that's been very, very important. And it's kind of gotten me out of the way of a lot of business growth. Delegation is a tough thing sometimes, especially for the newbie or the person who's just going off with their business, just starting off. You don't want to, you don't want to delegate because you've built all this stuff. You and and when you bring it on to somebody and they don't do it right, it's like, oh no, you know, so it's it it takes it takes cojones to delegate and to delegate properly. So I totally am a believer of that it's got to be written up properly. Absolutely. And we've mentioned a couple of resources here. You mentioned the great book. I want to hear that again. And if there's are if there are any really good resources that you'd like to share with our audience. So I, the, the book once again was Positioning the Battle for Your Mind by Al Reese and Jack Trout. Incredible, one of the best reads you can get. Um, you know, I really gobble up anything I can on branding positioning because it's that's the thing nobody's thinking of that actually is going to be vital to your business growth. Um, the other tool, which is pretty awesome, is a tool called Chartable.com. And not because it, it, you can look at where podcasts are ranked, but the tool I actually use in that is called Smart Links. And what it allows you to do is it create a link to your podcast that when people open it up, it'll push them to whatever platforms on their device. Meaning if I click on this link and I'm on an iPhone, it's going to go to Apple Podcasts. Um, or if I open it, I'm on uh, an Android, it's going to push it to whatever I listen to and on an Android. So that's a really valuable way to make sure you're not losing listeners. Um, another really, really great book that changed the game for me is The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Because I, like I told you, I was an academic guy, man. I had to learn the amount of effort you have to do to get a result. And if you can learn that, you can make a big difference. So, so to me, that's what I would, the things I would leave your, your listeners with. Those are great resources. And I thank you so much for sharing with us. We're familiar with some of those. And now we're familiar with all of them because we've just mentioned it. <laughs> Jeremy, we got a few more minutes and I want to know, I want to pull the good stuff. Anything else to hack our brand that you that you would like to mention or anything you have on your site even that is important for us to learn about? Well, I would say the big thing people don't do is they wait until there's a problem to start worrying about their brand and what's out there and, and things like that. And what you need to actually be doing is consistently doing that, whether it's getting on podcasts, whether it's gathering Google reviews, which is something people don't think about. But when people search for you, one of the first things to show up on Google is your reviews. So you need to be consistently getting these things week after week after week, because if you're growing and you're getting out there, you're going to get negative attention from time to time. People are just going to want to take you down. So you just got to understand that's going to happen at some point. So you keep getting the good stuff for when that bad thing comes, it isn't going to hurt you that bad. And that's, that's what you really need to think about is being consistently getting out there. And we did talk a lot about the podcast world today. We actually have a great resource on our site, um, which will really help people get featured on the right shows. And it's called The Seven Reasons You're Not Getting on Your Favorite Podcast. And it goes through all the basic PR items, a lot of which we've covered today, and how you can implement them in your business to help you get featured on the right podcasts. You can get that over at commandyourbrand.com slash seven reasons. And the word seven or the number seven will work for that. Jeremy, that brings up an interesting point here. Some of us have so much time. There's only so much we can do in the day without that delegating word that we talked about to get other people to do it and try to get them to do it successfully. But it, when we start off and we want to grow, as I'm sort of like uh, we're on the path. We're, we're newbies in this. Is it more important to get on other podcasts or is it more important to podcast ourselves? Because let's just say we're doing something else. We can't do both. What do you think is the most important and why? When you're newer, initially, it makes more sense to have your own podcast. And the reason is it's information you can control and it helps you to get more familiar with your own voice. I find a lot of people don't have a great experience being a guest until they really know who they are and how they communicate and how they feel about issues. And you work that out by having your own show. So to me, I tell everybody, if you're new in your business, the best place to start is with having your own podcast. Once you start to have some success, it makes more sense to start going on them. Um, so that, that's what I usually tell people. That's very good. And you know, I think, I know there's like nearly 2 million people at podcasting at, at this time, I, something very, very close to that. We just hit over 2 million, man. We're, we're, we're like 2.1 now. Well, last week it was 1.9. <laughs> We did, we did it. We did. We did two hundred thousand this week. You believe it? 
there's a lot of reasons I believe that people don't podcast, but you know, we have, okay, 2 million, 2.1 million podcasters right now with mm -hmm. a couple billion people in this world. There's reasons that they don't podcast, but they should. And I hope to encourage more and more of them. Some people don't like their voice, don't like how they sound, don't like how they look, mm -hmm. don't think it's right. There's, there are these various considerations people have. And I saw a person just the, just yesterday, I think it was, I saw a video. No, excuse me. I spoke to a person who went on TikTok and he had these same considerations. And he said very clearly that it didn't matter the quality of his video. It didn't matter the sound quality. It just didn't matter. Cause he said, when you, when the final product is viewed by people, it's what you're saying. It's what's going on. That's most important. And it was really profound because he, he got in the millions and millions and millions of views mm -hmm. and he never focused on, do I sound right? Is this right? Is this lighting right? It was just really, really important. And, and I wanted to stress that as very key when you're doing something, I say, do it the Italian way, just do it, just jump in and and just take action. And I bring that up because I love your point of view on where and when a person should start podcasting. We've we've now identified the public relations, the hacking, the branding, that they should podcast before they get on other shows. When do you want to start podcasting? I'd say, you know, start now. You know, start now. But if you want to figure out what your differentiator is, like how am I different from other people in my space? And then start. Don't just start just to like kind of like uh, you know, have random conversations that aren't going to lead anywhere. So you want to figure out how you're different from people in your space, because that's the really big thing you're going to promote is your differentiator. So that's where you start. But I would say at the same time, you want to have some of the basics in, right? Like you don't have to have a, a high-end mic like this one, because I'm, you know, this is a high-end studio mic. You can get a, you know, basic audio technica mic for under a hundred bucks, but you need to sound decent because one of your first barriers is people being able to listen to you, right? If they're listening to you on audio and it's hard to listen to, they're not going to want to have it inside their ears because that's, you know, where they're getting your information. So I would say have your professionalism in, have the basics of, you know, a good microphone, some quality content and figure out how you're different because I think that's really, really important. But, you know, if you're at the beginning of your journey, it's, there's no better way to get out there. Um, you know, I said your podcast should support your business. I started a podcast before I had a business and they grew together. So you want to really figure out how what you're doing and what you're saying can work together. You know, I did the same thing too. I podcasted and then I grew a business out of that. And I really hope this stimulates and inspires and motivates people because in this day and age, we need to be more and more in control of what we do. The more we're in control of what we do, the better we feel. And it's scary. You know, I left a, uh, I was making mid six figures in the corporate world and I left that to be an entrepreneur. It's very scary to not have that, that parachute and that cushy job and everything. It's very, but, and, and you work more hours as an entrepreneur too, though you have a lot more fun, but when you're in control of it, you can, you can move and flex with what's happening. And there, and I hate to say this, but it seems sometimes we don't know which way things are going in the world. So if you're not podcasting now, if you're not looking at that, I really think that you should take a good look at this and add it to whatever you're doing, whether whether you are that accountant, whether you run a construction company or work in a construction company, whether you're a gardener or whether you're doing something because you're doing it just to make money and survive, but you love, you love wrenching on cars, podcast what you love and build that into a business. I think that's really, really important. It's worked for us and I really want it to work for you. Any other comment on that, Jeremy? I'll, I'll say to, to what you said that it's powerful and that's it. You know, we don't really know what can happen in the world. And the thing to think about is economies change, governments change, seasons change, man. Like all that stuff changes. The only security you really have is in yourself, your own ability and what you create. Um, so that's what you really want to be thinking about. And if you can do that in, you know, starting a podcast and making it part of what you do, that's something you can control. And that's really, really important to have things that you can control so you can be cause and not effect of everything in your life. And I think it's just a really vital thing to, to add to what you said there, man. Excellent points. Thank you so much. Once again, we talked about hacking your brand with Jeremy Ryan Slate. We talked a lot of stuff, great stuff. I really hope this really gets into your brain on some of this and you can find out more about Jeremy at commandyourbrand.com. Jeremy, thank you so much for sharing with us today. This was really intriguing. 
Hey, T Money, thank you so much for having me, man. I had a great time, and I hope to come back in the future. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me while I featured an elite entrepreneur who took his vision to reality. What a great chat full of marketing, branding, and promotional knowledge and wisdom, hacking your brand with Jeremy Ryan Slate. He's such a great marketer, he knows how to promote, and I've had the pleasure of knowing him for quite a few years, and I've seen his business grow, and it's phenomenal. We talked about, well, how brands can utilize the one billion dollar podcast market and there's 2.1 million podcasters right now we talked about some basics of pr that anyone can use we talked about how to compete like a big brand but not spend like one and that's through getting on podcasts and podcasting we talked about building a million dollar network through podcasts we talked about his daily routine that contributes to his success and he gave some great book references as well and behind all this, it's all about promotion, marketing, and learning how to have a connection with the type of person that you do business with. And you can do that with podcasting. It's a great door opener. To have a good think on this, check out some of those references that we talked about that Jeremy is offering as well as some of the books. And let's help you move on your journey to success. And please remember, support the show with a nice review or comments on the video platforms. And of course, you can go to Tony D-U-R-S-O.com slash review. And don't forget, I know I've asked you this earlier. Please share with a few friends to help them, right? All right. We're going to help you move on your journey to success. Thanks. And remember, just take action. Success awaits those who persevere and remain steadfast despite the odds. Sow good seeds, do good deeds, and join me on the next episode of the Tony D'Urso Show. We hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of the Tony D'Urso Show with his key influencers. Be sure to tune in again next Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Influencers Channel.